My name is Kevin Bailey. I'm a visual effects supervisor and one of the co-founders of Atomic Fiction. Uh, we're a 45-person visual effects company in Emeryville, California, and a sandwich right in between Pixar and, and Tippett Studios. We're, we're in good company here. Here at Atomic Fiction, we actually do a pretty broad range of visual effects. We actually started out wanting to be a character company, you know, do digital humans, and that's really where we put a lot of our R&D focus into. As we've been building our digital humans pipeline and amassing a bunch of knowledge and sort of shader settings and, and uh, really a foundation for making a human that is completely believable and indistinguishable from, from reality, We'd been stockpiling all this knowledge and along comes the Underworld 4 uh, visual effects team and said, uh, oh, uh, Scott Speedman wasn't able to show up for reshoots and we had to get a body double in for him and how quickly can you make a fully realistic digital version of Scott Speedman's face? And using scan data from like four years ago and images from red carpet events off of uh, Google Images, combined with uh, you know V-Ray's skin shader and some of the, the the tricks that we'd figured out early on, we put together these two shots, stereoscopic, uh, you know, as hero as hero gets, and recreated Scott Speedman's face. The end result is actually it's kind of startling. At the it, you would never know that these are CG shots in the film if I hadn't told you that you know they were they were completely digital humans. As excited as we are about digital character work and digital humans, we've had the great opportunity to work on some amazing movies that are more on the digital environments and effects side of things recently. One of those ones, which we're super proud of, is Ryan Johnson's Looper. And for Looper, we work with Karen Galikas, the studio side visual effects supervisor, to create about 85 digital environment and digital vehicle and effect shots for the film. So pretty much anytime you see a futuristic cityscape in Looper, that is our Matt team that created those. We had the pleasure of being uh, on those shots from the early concept stage all the way through to the finished matte painting. So we were able to kind of gain artistic inspiration and really set the mood for the shots. And then those same artists, those same matte painters, worked with those concepts and built out Th full 3D environments. Coley Wirtz, our modeler, built these like insanely complex, you know, really tricked out buildings that we then lit and textured and looked at to a certain point and rendered them with V-Ray for the matte painters to then paint on top of and reproject their paint uh, for the final effect. So we did that for uh, a lot of Looper, and then there's also some flying vehicles, and we got really good at doing anamorphic lens flares. Um, you know, the match moves on that show were just a terrible, terrible nightmare uh, because of the anamorphic lenses and the breathing while it's focusing, and just all kinds of stuff got in our way. But that, all that stuff that kind of got in our way at the end of the day actually contributed to be a grittier, more realistic film. So our visual effects supervisor, Ryan Tudhope, he did all kinds of studying of old movies that use these lenses and use these cameras, uh, and Blade Runner was obviously a huge inspiration uh, to help add that sort of grit and that reality on top of those images uh, that's really hard to sort of replicate just with a computer. So uh, even the things that were really hard about Looper at the end of the day contributed to it being a very unique and visually successful movie about the future. The most recent movie that we just finished, which is probably the one that we're the most excited about, uh, is Robert Zemeckis' return to live action called Flight. Flight uh, started out as 130 shots, and we were the only studio that was booked on the film. And I was out on set uh, for about three months in Atlanta shooting Flight with, with Zemeckis and, and Don Burgess as DP and Mike Lanteri, the special effects supervisor, and their team. Through that shooting process, it was starting to become apparent that, oh, this, this movie might actually be a little bit bigger than what we initially thought it was. And that turned out to be true. Uh, I think by the second set of turnovers, uh, we realized that the movie was actually gonna be closer to 400 shots instead of in the low 100s. And, and that's actually where it ended up being. Not only is that a big creative challenge for us and, and you know making sure that we have real A players on the team handling every aspect of the show, but infrastructure wise, it, was, it would have been panic inducing if we'd been a traditionally set up visual effects studio because if we built our company to handle 130 shots and all of a sudden we have 400, it would have been physically impossible and monetarily completely unfeasible to uh, expand the company 
triple, triple the render farm, you know, triple the amount of workstations, desks, everything. But because of the fact that we're rendering everything in the cloud, we were able to actually, uh, at a snap of a finger, essentially, uh, expand our cloud infrastructure to be able to render 400 shots instead of 130. As you can probably surmise by the title and the trailers, uh, the vast majority of the beginning of this film takes place at an airport. And airports, you can't shoot at airports anymore. It's, it's practically impossible. Even in LA, it's really, really difficult to shoot at airports. So we ended up uh, on some small, you know, kind of private field outside of Atlanta that looked nothing like a big airport and had to shoot these shots uh, that uh, ended up being 90% digital at the end of the day because so much of it had to be replaced with matte painting. So we used V-Ray for 3ds Max and uh, the matte painters use 3ds Max primarily for their projections as well uh, to create the, the big, you know, kind of bustling airport backgrounds for these shots. The same goes for inside the cockpit where, you know, Whip, uh, Denzel's character, is taking off in this rainstorm. Um, all of that had to be generated completely digitally. Some of the other big challenging shots uh, that are in flight are shots that we actually hadn't planned for at the, be the beginning of the show. Uh, I think halfway through editing the plane crash sequence, uh, Bob realized that, you know, man, I really want to have some shots that happen outside of the airplane in addition to inside the airplane to help kind of establish where some of these noises are coming from or show that we're dumping fuel from the airplane, things like that. So we had to add, I think it was six or seven, you know, all CG airplane shots. And so not only do we have to build a completely realized computer generated airplane that had working landing gear and hydraulics and they all have to like kind of quiver and, and buff it as the wind hits these things because the, the, the whole reason why they're deploying the landing gear in mid descent at 400 miles an hour, which you never do in a real airplane, it's just too fast, is to help slow them down. It's the only thing that they can do to help slow them down. So there had to be this like real violence and this, this sort of like energy to everything. So, uh, you know, we built out all the cables to wiggle and the control surfaces to, you know, really have a lot of noise to them. Um, we even uh, took these animated texture cards and flew them by the airplane to give this really subtle motion in the reflection of the airplane that when you're watching the shot, you don't really see, you don't really notice it, but if you watch it without that stuff, you notice that something's wrong, you know? So, so those little touches that help to make those, those shots look really, really great. Even with all that stuff, we uh, still felt like there was a little bit of like energy missing because you know we had clouds flying by and things like that, but it just felt like it needed a little bit more apparel. And uh, I'd actually been on an airplane taking off to go to uh, LA a couple days before and noticed as we were taking off from Oakland Airport, this like big patch of condensation show up on the upper side of the wing as, as the pilot pulled up and created this big pocket of negative uh, air pressure behind, behind the wing. And this moisture just instantly appeared and then whoop, as quickly as it came, it was gone again. And so we started playing around with this idea of using uh, the, the areas that would theoretically have this really low air pressure behind them, which you would at extending the landing gear at 400 miles an hour, to create this like really staccato, uh, uh, you know, condensation effect behind the airplane. It was like one of those like imperfections that you layer on top of a shot that really kind of takes it that extra, you know, couple percent to being something that's dramatically cool. Uh, and I think it adds a lot of energy to the shot. Uh, and that was you know, also rendered uh, in V-Ray. So we were able to use V-Ray uh, in both Maya and Max and with effects and with hard surface to really kind of tie everything together at the end of the day to give us a, a really consistent result. The pivotal moment of the crash, or uh, the final moment of the crash, is when the airplane actually hits the ground and uh, there's a slow motion shot inside the cockpit of Denzel flying forward, his head hitting the yoke, uh, and the cockpit, you know, crumpling around him. We put uh, Denzel in a seat, a real airplane seat, real pilot seat, 
in front of a green screen and had him mime out this action. He had this little foam yoke in his hand and stuff like that. But we had to generate the entire environment around him digitally. And it was the only shot in the movie that we actually had to do a completely digital cockpit environment. So we photographed it extensively for reference photography. And then our modeler, Brian Freisinger, took that and uh, just modeled the crap out of this cockpit interior and textured it and looked at it so that it really had that nice matte paint finish on it and, and gave us lots of like little uh, buttons and knobs and things to play around with like throwing off when the plane crashes and you know we're going to flicker the screens and just sort of add all kinds of other you know imperfections you know flying glass things like that um, and he actually animated it as well so it was this perfect example of where one of our really really talented artists was able to kind of take the shot from beginning to end uh, and own a whole heck of a lot of shot as sort of a team of one and then our compositor, Mike, Mike Terpstra, took all of those renders that were all done in V-Ray using the you know, multi-channel EXR outputs and tweak with it. So he could actually, because we had every light broken out as a separate uh, ch channel in the multi-channel EXR, we were able to you know, uh, modulate the light as there's like you know, dirt coming over the front window. We're able to block out the light that's coming from that direction, but not the ambient light that's coming in from you know, it behind him. Uh, so it was able to create this in comp, completely in comp, create this very realistic interactive effect. Um, and then for outside the window, we actually used a combination of uh, effects that were digitally generated. And then also Michael and Terry's special effects team uh, and I spent a bunch of uh, time in an afternoon firing big buckets of dirt at plexiglass windows. Um, and I just ended up with all kinds of just dirt and sand in my hair after that day, but man, it was fun. Uh, and I think that the, 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 that mixing of practical elements with uh, computer generated ones is something that helped to really make it that much more of a convincing visual effect at the end of the day. We chose V-Ray as a render because, well, we actually think it's the best render out there right now. It, uh, we, we come from a long background of using a whole slew of, of renders out there. I mean, uh, we've, we've gone, I won't list off the names of all of them, but you know, they're, they're everything from uh, you know, the sort of really standard stuff to some of the more esoteric renders out there. And throughout all of our R&D over the years, uh, the package that V-Ray offers really was the one that made the most sense to us. And, and that is uh, for three main reasons. One is because of the fact that as uh, a ray tracer, there's not this whole giant list of dependencies of stuff that has to happen before you get an image up on your, your screen. So in a very, very short amount of time, you can get a really grainy but totally representative version of what your render is and the artist can have really really quick turnaround and that's if they're not using the V-Ray RT feature then it's even faster and it's much better looking but you know if it's something that that V-Ray RT isn't going to handle uh, it still is uh, remarkably fast to get a representative uh, version of what your render is going to look like when you actually go to hit the final render button it's really fast and the result is just like what you did in your really quick iterations at the head of it. So that is one really big part of just the sort of core technological reason why V-Ray works well for us. The second reason is that the tools that are sort of peripherally around V-Ray are really, to be honest, way more advanced than anything else that's out there right now. The, the shaders that are offered, the proxy geo workflows, the, you know, there's, I can go on and on and list them off, but V-Ray just sort of like has its stuff together when it comes to the tools that the artists need to do their job quickly, just being right there and accessible and us not having to spend time developing them in-house. So that's a really big thing. And the third big thing is that V-Ray were one of the first people to partner up with Zinc and make this cloud rendering uh, sort of dream uh, of reality. Uh, I think we've rendered uh, over a quarter million core hours in uh, the, the cloud using Zinc and V-Ray um, for flight alone. And it was just a really amazing experience watching these two forward-thinking companies working together to enable us to create cool art. And without them collaborating together, uh, the, the cloud dream wouldn't have happened uh, as quickly as it did. Uh, so I think that's, that's a good example of where uh, everyone, be it you know, the, the, the people who have the hardware, the people who have the software, and the sort of cloud service providers, uh, they all work together in tandem in order to 
uh, make cloud rendering be as, uh, as flexible and as scalable as it needs to be in order to be a commercial success within the visual effects industry. So this is a big, big, big reason why we chose V-Ray as well.